Hello, welcome back to my channel everyone. Today we are doing something new, I guess. I decided I wanted to try my hand maybe at doing some just like science reaction videos, I guess. I already watch movies and TV shows and will rate the science in them, talk about how actually accurate they may or may not be, especially if it contains a science lab. But today we're going to be talking about the 2016 reboot of Ghostbusters, which I know is a very controversial movie. I'm not here to say if it's good or bad or discuss its quality or anything. I personally think the movie is hilarious and I love it, but that's my own personal opinion. You don't have to follow my own personal opinion, but I am here to rate the science in it and talk about the actual scientific content or scientific accuracy about the stuff that is portrayed just from my experience working in a lab. That's what I'm here for. And I actually did learn while I was doing a little bit of research on this video that when writing and filming this movie, they did consult actual real scientists to work on stuff like the lab and the equations on the boards behind them and certain props and stuff like that. So they did get help from real scientists. And personally, I think that shows in this movie. And as we get into discussing it, I'll tell you, I honestly think this is one of the more sciencey, <laughs> lab accurate movies that I've seen. So let's get into Ghostbusters 2016. So first off, I adore this scene. I think Kate McKinnon's character was the best part of the whole movie, agree to disagree, whatever. But the lab here is what is we're really focusing on here and it is honestly so accurate i think everybody thinks that like you know science labs are all clean they're all white everything's put away it's all fancy it's all modern science labs a lot of times are like honestly kind of piles of junk that like old equipment that doesn't work anymore like sort of mixed in with like new equipment that still looks like it was built in the 80s or at least the early 2000s even though it costs like a million dollars like equipment everywhere a lot of at least from my personal experience a lot of like power tools or even just like screwdrivers yeah this is a lot like any sort of lab that i have worked in so for example my lab in graduate school it was an atmospheric chemistry lab we literally had just like a whole room full of broken or old equipment that like didn't work anymore or we didn't know how to use because nobody in that like in the present lab had like in living memory had used it and it just sat there in a room we had like an entire room in our lab that we just refer to as the sketchy wet lab because nobody actually went in there and it was really sketchy when i worked in a marine biology lab we had a actually like uh this was on an internship out in friday harbor but there were basically a direct input of seawater into our lab like you could open up a tap and seawater would come out and we would fill up our jugs of seawater on a tool on a on a metal stool that was just so rusted we called it tetanus stool like we had this contraption to rotate jugs of water that was just this like metal thing with a bunch of rubber tubes coming out of it you tied a water bottle to and just watched it like rotate or maybe send your water bottle like glass container to a certain doom like labs are <laughs> kind of inherently a little bit sketchy i mean they're safe they're supposed to be safe but they're not brand new they're not modern they're often like underfunded and it's just people making do with like equip expensive equipment for as long as possible and i really think the lab in this movie just captured that vibe so well and i mean working out of a working out of like the top of a chinese restaurant hi scientists gotta get scientist stuff done man uh, yeah no shame in that and let's take a look at the Ghostbusters actually themselves. So in a lot of the scenes where they're fighting ghosts, they are actually practicing almost proper PPE, personal protection equipment. Like, they've got the jumpsuits on to protect their clothing from the ghosty slime. They actually pull their freaking hair back. Like, it. <laughs> this is my thing. I have so many issues watching stuff on TV and these, like, women are like working or doing science or stuff and their hair their long hair is like in their face hanging down and i'm like this isn't right like a real working woman put 
Where don't working women put their hair up when they're doing a job? This is, at least most of the time, maybe you're okay with long hair dangling in your face. I am not. But when you're in the lab or doing something sciencey, your hair should be up. It's one of the first safety rules that you learn, I feel like, in science lab class. And I was, computer sounds like it's gonna freaking die over here. And like, I, as a TA in graduate school, had to make sure that my students always had their hair tied up. And if they didn't have their hair tied up, I had to tell them to tie up their hair. So it was refreshing to see a cast of all women wearing baggy jumpsuits with their hair tied up, trying to fight some ghosts using science. That to me actually represents like actual science because you're not out here trying to look good. You're not out here trying to look attractive. There is nothing sexy about your hair lighting on fire or getting a bunch of chemicals because you were too like self-conscious to tie it up, okay? You know what's sexy? Safety. Proper lab safety is sexy. That's what you go out to everyone. So A plus job on actually having them put their hair up. All four of them too, for the most part. That really made me happy. I know it's a weird thing, but it did. Next, we're gonna discuss my all-time favorite line for this movie. I just love when Kate McKinnon is just like, <laughs> eating some Pringles, and she's like, what? Nobody can resist these salty parabolas. Because number one, it's like hilariously weird, and number two, it's scientifically accurate because Pringles are actually, wish I had a Pringle right now because I'm also hungry, but Pringles are shaped like a quadratic surface called a hyperbolic paraboloid. A hyperbolic paraboloid. It is a very unique shape that allows them to have structural integrity in the can, allow them to be crunchy, and is actually a shape you see in other places in science. I think that's a little fun aside that if you don't realize that, like, next time look at a Pringle and realize, wow, this is actually a really weird shape and it's a really mathematical and engineeringly important shape. Engineeringly is not a word. Whatever. A plus for the salty parabolas. <laughs> All right, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was just their gear in this movie. So the ghosts are not real in the scientific sense. So obviously all of the ghost busting and the ghost busting gear is stretching some of the truth a little bit, but there is a lot of science rooted into that. And that has to do with their proton packs they're using to fight off the ghost, the proton streams. So this is making the assumption that the ghosts have to be negatively charged. So using a positively charged proton stream will trap them. This thing is, this is discussed in the like OG 1980s Ghostbuster movie. So in all of the movies, they're using protons to control and trap these ghosts. In the 2016 reboot, they're using the proton specific, proton stream specifically generated by something called a synchrotron. A synchrotron is a form of particle accelerator, which means something that move subatomic particles really, 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 really fast. And in this case, they're moving protons really fast, by shooting them through a magnetic field. So when you apply a magnetic field to a charged particle, it causes a force to be exerted on it that will cause it to increase its speed and they'll just travel around and around and around and around and around and around and around. <laughs> Sorry. In a circle and they will continually pick up speed. So in the case of the proton packs, as those protons are picking up speed inside of the synchrotrons present in their backpack, they're getting shot out and use, being used to trap the ghost. In real life, as synchrotron facilities, they can be used, those accelerating particles can be used for all sorts of purposes. But my lab in grad school actually went to a synchrotron facility to use it for a specific type of microscopy. So as those particles are moving faster and faster and faster around the synchrotron, they can start to emit energy. And that energy is in the form of stuff on the electromagnetic spectrum. So like x-rays, gamma rays, stuff like that even infrared light. And my lab used something called Stixum or Scanning Transmission X-ray Microscopy, which I talked a little bit about in my nanoplastics dress video, where they're actually using X-rays put off by electrons in a synchrotron to look at specific particles. So you're using the X-rays that come from accelerated electrons from the synchrotron. So that's a fun application of synchrotron stuff no, I mean, not as much fun as using them to power protons packs that will shoot and capture ghosts, but still fun. There are just some cool science tidbits that I think make the movie feel more authentic to the STEM field, personally. And whether or not that's the point of Ghostbusters, I don't really care. I just, for one, enjoy seeing, like, 
an actual lab in a movie. Scientists actually wearing safety equipment. And they probably could have used safety glasses, but And actually hearing some real life science discussed in a movie, even if they do take it into the science fiction and go where, you know, science doesn't go. But that's what makes really good science fiction is having 98% of it be real science and having that last 2% be the next step. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm kind of curious to know how it's going to turn out after I edit it. But <laughs> I had a lot of fun thinking about my thoughts about Ghostbusters. So I hope you liked them too. I guess we'll find out. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check me out on Instagram, tell all your friends about me, and as always, keep it sciencey.